Hello viewers, welcome to Wonderful Physics. In this video, I am going to discuss with you some physics which is not in your curriculum or in your syllabus. This is something out of the syllabus and it is something where physics is applied in practical life or in real life situation. And the astonishing thing or the wonderful thing about this video is that we are discussing something which was made about 4000 years back in Egypt and that is the pyramid. This pyramid has been a subject of intense in investigation in the scientific community in the among the historians, among physicists, scientists, the engineers, bio biotechnologists and it has been a very hot topic for movies. You must have watched many movies that have that are based on pyramids and they show you many things that are mysterious and they are really entertaining. But beyond entertainment, these great structures hide inside themselves a great deal of information, scientific achievement that was made about 4000 years back. At that time there were no equipments, there were no advanced machinery, there were no tools, scientific tools. With simple equipments they built some magnificent structures that involve, that hide inside themselves a great deal of scientific achievement. And when we know this, when we come to know this, it is really striking, it, it is really enlightening. A large number of papers have been published, books have been authored, documentaries have been made on the pyramids of Egypt. And each and every document, every piece of research work has revealed new mysteries, has revealed new achievements that were made at that time inside these monuments. So let us move to our topic about these pyramids. Here I will discuss the electrical properties or the application of electricity and magnetism in a more simple formalism. That how the principles of electricity and magnetism they were used in such huge structures called the pyramids. Achieve something which is really enthralling even today. Even today such achievement is very difficult to realize. So the first question that comes to the mind of people, of students, of researchers is that why the Egyptians built the pyramids? What was the purpose of building these magnificent huge structures that involved tons of stones that were transported without cranes, without machinery? Only human muscle and human energy was used in building these pyramids. What was the purpose? What could be the purpose? According to the accepted theory, according to the accepted uh, belief, these tombs or these pyramids were built as tombs for their kings. Egyptians believed in resurrection means life after death. They believed that their kings and queens after they die or they leave their earthly bodies, they go to some other world and so they mummified those bodies and kept inside the pyramids with all the belongings that are required for a person to survive. Jewelry, some jewelry, weapons, food items, many cutleries, perfumes, everything. They preserved these things in these tombs called the pyramids so that their kings and queens could use them in their next life. This is the belief, this is the thing that is known to everyone almost. But what is intriguing is that such magnificent structures are only for the used for the purpose of tombs or graves. 
this is something which is difficult to accept the ancient egyptians they worshiped their kings and queens and they held themselves held their kings and queens as gods so they had deep respect for them and that is why they did this they did not want their kings and queens to be buried in simple graves and they wanted something magnificent as magnificent as the king himself after his death the magnificent king should live or should reside in a magnificent tomb this was the principle this was the thinking they had so the pyramids when we talk about pyramids the famous one is the pyramid of giza and apart from pyramid of giza there are there is the pyramid of menakur khufu and khafu in egyptian language pyramid is called mir which is something related to the dead or something related to the dead person maybe but still the historians the scientists they were curious about this thing that such huge structures cannot be used as, as only as tombs so this theory was not convincing that they were used as tombs only so this mystery had to be revealed investigations had to be done the curiosity was not over so people tried to investigate these magnificent monuments in scientific manner sometimes in non scientific manner also many people try held the idea that these tombs these pyramids are actually the places where there are huge amounts of uh, um, treasures jewelry and coins they are hidden so they tried to intrude in these structures and with the purpose to get those treasures but what was hidden in the pyramids was more than more costly more precious than stones and jewelry and treasures it was magnificent science so what was the science how did all this start how did the investigation start that is a very interesting story that story that first expedition of the pyramids led to a new discovery and now let us see what is that new discovery and who was the person who made the first expedition and what he found inside that pyramid first thing that has been always intrigu in intriguing to the researchers and uh, scientific communities that how these pyramids were constructed what was the material that was used and uh, how did they manage to carry those huge stones that weighed millions of tons to such heights so whatever i am going to tell you this is based on the studies that have been conducted in the course of time and has been reported in the books and in the research journals articles and in the documentaries all the workers all the researchers have presented a most plausible explanation or a most plausible idea of uh, how these structures were made but they are, have uh, achieved what knowledge they have achieved is that we are going to discuss it this uh, pyramid is actually made up of two words one is called the pyro which means heat and 
Amit means in the middle, and this is a very significant uh, uh, achievement to decipher or to decode the word pyramid. As I told you that these structures were made for tombs. This idea was not convincing, and something had to be done to reveal the real mystery. So this pyramid word means that it is a fire in the middle. Now what did it do? What was the fire and what did it do? That is the point of discussion in this lecture, in this video. And I am sure it will be, it, you will find this very interesting. So let us move further. So this uh, fire in the middle is the biggest achievement of this pyramid. At that time when the pyramids were built, the only equipment that was available to man or the workers was a hammer and a chisel. They used this equipment to build such magnificent structures. It is really something which is very interesting, which is very scintillating. The pyramids were mainly made of limestone and limestone being soft material, it could be cut using a copper chisel and a hammer. So hammer and chisel were the main equipments that they used in building these magnificent structures. Apart from hammer and chisel, they had levers and pulleys and they used it in a very intelligent manner and were, ma and were able to move such huge structures. Now this is the cross section of the pyramid and a pyramid, mathematically it is a combination of many shapes, many geometries. The shape of the pyramids, they appear to be triangular but they are of eight sides that are equal in height and they can be seen at sunset and sunrise. This is again very strange that when you visit a pyramid, from the front it appears to be a triangular piece of work but at sunset and sunrise they appear as structures with eight sides of equal height. Soft limestone was very easy to cut as you can see in the left diagram, left figure that uh, using a hammer chisel and on a stone or metal plate they could, e they could e easily cut, shape the limestone chunks or pieces. The right side is very interesting where you can see people pulling huge blocks of stones, the stones, the Building blocks of pyramids were million, were tons, weighed tons in weight. They were not so easy to transport from one place to another. So what they devised was a structure which is similar to a railway track. These heavy boulders were pulled on these railway tracks. But still the work was not easy. You will be surprised to know that these Egyptians had something more in their mind. They used total planning as you can see in the cartoon. How to move these blocks. So how these pyramids are built? How could the stones weighing in turns to be lifted? Because once you have got the stones from somewhere, you have to lift them and move them. And in the present times we have cranes and advanced machines but at that time they were not available. So what was the process? This is a simple equation of motion of an inclined plane. Here F is the force applied in pulling the strings or pulling the <coughs> ropes. <coughs> w is the weight of the stones. Theta is the angle of elevation of the inclined and mu is the coefficient of friction. So what they managed, what they adjusted was the angle theta and the coefficient of friction mu. And that was done in a, again in a very interesting way. It is electrifying that how these people managed to achieve such, such practical knowledge. 
they used the principle of frictions and pulleys the sled was used to pull the stone and the force equation is this one that if the force is force is greater than w sin theta plus mu w cos theta this is the equation you must have studied as a student of physics in the motion of inclined plates then what they did they used a special lubricant in uh, moving these sledges the lubricant was sand with calculated amounts of water it was not that you just uh, add uh, any amount of water to the sled and it will move so there is a myth that the pyramids of egypt they were built by some uh, slaves who were uh, so how what it all started <coughs> the expedition of the magnificent structures called the pyramids in the recent investigations it was found that there are some carvings some paintings on the pyramid walls that show people using some equipments for lighting and that were hand held they were not similar to something like lanterns and torches and there was no suit that was found on the walls of the pyramids so this indicated that the ancient egyptians they had some technique of using electricity but how was it possible to understand this we should know about the first expedition that was made by khalif al mamun it was not an expedition it was something a curiosity because al mamun held the idea that there was some treasure that was hidden inside and he went to get that treasure and for reaching the treasure inside the pyramid <coughs> al mamun had to break the walls or enter into the pyramid as there was no gate no entrance or no gateway for directly entering inside so it was a problem for him. how to manage that then al mamun and his men they devised an idea that was again very interesting and involved a great deal of science what they did was to heat the rocks because they were made made of limestone and it was pit, it was pretty soft and after heating the rock they poured some vinegar inside it and on entering the passage or when they entered inside the pyramid they uh, they saw some kind of long passage and huge blocks of granite that were plugged in the ceilings of the chamber at that time they were not acquainted they did not know what was the purpose of these huge pyramid blocks that were <coughs> inside the pyramids this granite is the key to all the hidden signs of electricity inside the pyramid this is the figure that is showing these huge blocks so let us now try to understand the physics of electricity inside the pyramid the interior of the pyramid that was made of granite and this granite was the key to the mystery to unlock the mystery of the electricity inside the pyramid the explanation of electrical phenomena or the pyramids as power houses as, as it has been written in many books lies in the use of granite this granite that they obtained from nearby areas had the property that it contained 55% quartz quartz is sio2 a piezoelectric material and was slightly radioactive however this radioactivity was not very significant or it was not at all significant in producing the electrical phenomena but this quartz sio2 it is the magical stone you can say that created the magic of creating electricity 
without any power houses without any transmission wires and the power transmission without wire wiring or wireless power technology was evolved by the use of these quads basically what happens the quartz is a piezoelectric crystal which means when it is subjected to mechanical vibration or mechanical pressure it acts as a source of electric field or electric current or voltage and this is a transducer now the question arises how did this quartz vibrate is it that there were people who were shaking the pyramid no it was not so the pyramid was actually a resonator a device that resonated with the vibrations of the earth the pyramids were located at those points on earth where there is huge electromagnetic flux many of the pyramids are located on the side of nile river and there is underground water channel that is moving so these are structures are always in a state of oscillation it's not similar to earthquake otherwise they would have broken these structures are always oscillating with the frequency of the seismic waves inside the earth and these vibrations are the mechanical impulses that are that that are initiating the piezoelectric phenomena in the quartz crystal the quartz crystal are always in a state of mechanical pressure or mechanical force that is created by these seismic waves because your pyramid is a resonator it is resonating with the frequency of the earth and these quartz crystals they produce electricity now in building the those pyramids huge stones of huge blocks of granite were granite was used weighing millions of tons and so you can get an idea that the pyramid structure was containing millions and millions of quartz crystals piezoelectric quartz crystals throughout the their structure and which were all in a state of oscillation with the same frequency at the seismic waves so you can imagine that these structures are producing a huge amount of piezoelectricity the concept is how this piezoelectricity was used now one more important feature very interesting feature is that some of the pyramids had this gold cap inside the on their top this gold cap it was not that this gold cap was just for show or just for beauty it was actually the device or the component that was used for amplification of the signals and this is quite interesting and it really it forces you to believe that the pyramids were not built by humans they must have been built by the aliens because this intense technology or know how technical know how it is difficult to believe that humans had about 4000 years back now this structure of the pyramid is a very significant quantity or aspect when the electrical properties are to be discussed you must have heard the number pi 22 by 7 you know the definition you have been using this uh, number since your childhood there is a constant phi and the simple pythagorean theorem that we have been studying since our school days these mathematical relations have been physically realized in the in the pyramid so they were they were experts in mathematics also and designing of course designing the slant height of the pyramid it is necessarily 51.8 degree and the pyramid is aligned to the north and this structure makes it a special receiver of many fields inside the pyramid the direction of magnetic field is such that it is entering from the north pole 
it is inward in the north pole and outward in the south pole and this apex the gold cap which is called the gold cap creates a spin field that makes the electrons move on their own axis and that is how this thing is realized that I told you that pyramid the word pyramid means fire at the center the energy that is entering inside the walls it is concentrated at the center because it is bouncing between the walls this creates the fire at the center it is not the usual fire means the concentration of energy at the center of mass of the pyramid and the molecules they absorb the energy by resonance so this pyramid is a structure which is full of energy <clears throat> It has a huge store of energy concentrated inside it and this energy has miraculous properties. The center of mass, this is a mathematical problem, is at 1 by 3 from the apex and 2 by 3 from the base. And this is called the phi ratio, famous mathematical principle. So this is the this uh, you can just realize that how these people were able to realize such huge structures such strange structures if you like the video then please subscribe and tell me in the comments if there were any shortcomings i will try to clear them but this is a very interesting topic and i i want you to and I want to discuss with you some more aspects that are directly related to physics with the pyramids. Thank you.